Okay, let's see if we can get this going here. <clears throat> What's up, guys? Dirk here. Welcome back to the Dungeon Laboratory. Uh, I had a question yesterday. Well, yeah, another. Well, kind of a question, yeah. A question, and then uh, I replied with uh, the fact that I'll just make make a follow up video for this uh, the coil. That's over here. Um, I'll get it going for you guys, and I have my. Uh, um, I have a multimeter over here. It's set the frequency. I forget the frequency range it can it can measure, but I guess it's pretty pretty high up. Um, I don't know uh, how uh, this works as, as far as frequency is concerned. Um, I'll show you the uh, the diagram. Uh, I'll just give a quick demonstration to show you what it what it looks like on here uh, on how to actually work this thing. So I'll I'll get it started. Um, I don't think you're gonna hear the amplifier in the background. Um, I don't hear it on my videos, but if you if you guys do, I I apologize. I, I should unplug the damn thing, but it's kind of nice to uh, it gives you a reference um, to know that something's resonating uh, Tesla coil wise. I guess if you want to say that solid state anyway. So we'll get this going. And it's measuring right now, there's no output, but it's measuring 6 megahertz right now. But I don't think it's going to give any, it doesn't give any output. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, use my chicken stick here. We'll crank it up. I'm going to start getting a little bit of output. saying like one point or two point yeah it's going all over the place I don't know if my meter can handle it there we go I put it far enough away and it's 11 point wow it's going all over the place I don't think the meter can handle it uh, let's see if I can put it somewhere else this might be getting a bit of a this will work. Might. Uh, I gotta get this going again. This might be a little bit of a longish video. I apologize. I just figured I'd come down here and do this uh, video here really quick. Six megahertz. That's what it says on the, uh, the meter there. Does it change if I do that? No. 11.5, 11.6 megahertz. Okay. So interesting. And uh, basically, you're. This is a. Um, well, you can probably see in the video how I'm doing it. I'm basically tuning the circuit with this um, variable uh, condenser here in order to, to get this going. And you, I, I don't know, you kind of have to bring the, uh, I don't want to run that too long without the, uh, the fan on. This gets, it can get warm. I'll check it here. It's actually okay. It's not bad. And there's a big chunky heat sink on there, so not a big deal. Um, yeah, so I'll just bring the camera over here. So if you're at a good enough distance, I'd say about here. If you have a multimeter like this that has that, you basically you don't need to attach um, the ground anywhere. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise it. Um, probably not on this circuit. Probably could, but I don't know. I don't trust myself to do it, so I'm not. But you know, about that distance away from the the coil, uh, I'd say it's about a couple couple feet. I would say. 
then it'll measure around here and yeah and on that scale yeah what was 11 11 point between 5 and 6 uh, megahertz so this is actually a little bit higher than what I thought which is interesting I'm kind of glad I have this meter I do have frequency counters too uh, but yeah that's basically the uh, you know the circuit here and the thing's powered off and you're basically just going to be throttling this. It's actually pretty low in the picoferret range to get it up up there because uh, this is, um, you can't see it on this camera. I was going to use my phone because it has better zoom. But uh, I can't, I need two hands. Uh, so it's between 50 and 500 picoferrets. This is for a radio. Pretty big, chunky. You know, nothing fancy. Um, and this will this this will arc internally uh i do want to replace this with uh other capacitors like uh these film capacitors for example these ones right here um those are mk mkp4 capacitors those are pulse rated capacitors from wimo and you should be able to use that in this application one thing i might change eventually is this right here i believe this is just a filter capacitor for the yeah, shut up auto off um, uh, for the input power but I already have a huge filter here so that's, that's perfectly fine I, I am tempted to uh, I actually wouldn't work because I already have the filter capacitor in there now don't I I wanted to try it on uh, unfiltered uh, rectified mains or not mains but uh, from the, tr the transformer that's underneath here and, uh, yeah, that's what that that's what that's all about so the circuit I'll try to hold this on here for a little while, then draw it out. I hope you guys can see, or anybody that's interested in this, I know one person was. Um, so, that's basically the, uh, the coil circuit there. Uh, so basically that's, that's your main coil, the, the tallest one. Um, I'll have to go back uh, and show you guys. So, get your main coil here with the most windings, 130 turns. Uh, all the coils are, are 0 0.5 millimeter wire. I don't know what that is in, in uh, American wire gauge or standard wire gauge. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I would I would assume you could probably do this with with other types of magnet wire, as long as all the coils are of the same diameter. Um, you know, uh, the, the gauge of the wire that is 2.5 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters, and 2 centimeters. So you have three coils here. That's your variable capacitor, 1K resistor. Uh, this is going across the MOSFET here. There's an IRFP 460. I'm using a 250. Uh, and between 80 and 30 uh, volts, but I've, I've given this more voltage before, so it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, one Zener diode here. I also have a back-to-back -back Zener diode on the on the MOSFET, and then there's a potential potentiometer right there, a 10k pot right there. So basically, yeah, it's really hard to see on here. I probably should do this with my damn phone. Um, but the th basically the three coils are here. Here's your, your this is your uh, first coil. That's your second coil. And that's obviously your third coil. Um, you kind of have to play around with this. So basically, this capacitor, this coil, and these capacitors here that are going onto the MOSFET, I believe across gate and source. So these three items, components, what the hell was that? Oops. Where did that come from? <laughs> ICs are flying. Um, yeah. So this coil, this capacitor, and these capacitors are, are basically forming your, your resonant circuit uh, to get this going. And you're basically using this. This is this is to tune it. And I'm pretty sure I figured out where it's going to be. It's going to be in the low peak or ferret range. I'm going to try to replace this with normal uh, capacitors. Yeah. That's, that's basically it, though. Uh, you can go higher up in the voltage. I, I was doing 24 volts, 48 volts. You should, you should uh, be able to go up a bit higher. Uh, the potentiometer here 
is to, is to vary the gate voltage basically. So <clears throat> this is backwards. So if I get another example, so it's it's kind of like you know going that it's it's facing that way. Um, just trying to think here. I don't want to move this too, or I don't move this at all because it's at a good good position. You basically want to get this or turn this potentiometer uh, going clockwise, because in this this case it'd be counterclockwise. Yeah, so clockwise, and you'll you'll hear it. Um, well, if you have an amplifier like me, you'll hear it. But on your power supply, it'll start the the, the amp. Um, or the current will go up and this, as soon as you see that go up along with the voltage this meter isn't hooked in but if you see both start both these uh, meters go up uh, you you know you don't need to go any further on here because if the more that you give here um, you're, you're gonna hit the breakdown voltage of the gate of the MOSFET and kill it so yeah I hope Hope I clarified all that. I didn't sleep very well last night, so I kind of want to just come down here and mess around with some stuff. Maybe make a couple of videos. Um, yeah, I hope that was useful to anybody. Um, you probably are going to kill a couple MOSFETs doing this, trying to figure this out. But once you get it going, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. I like it. Oh, there's the diagram one more time. Probably pause it if you want to. I can't, I can't share this anymore. Um, because the website that this came from does not exist. But I'm pretty sure if you would type in high frequency SSTC electrical torch, you might be able to find your own circuit diagram, download it. Uh, there you go. Let's hope that's, uh, that was a good enough ex explanation for everybody. Um, I'm going to be playing with this guy here in just a little bit. A little mott that I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put some uh, pretty thick gauge wire on there. I'm going to see if I can uh, melt something really quick for just for fun. Yeah. Cheers, guys.